The brake hangers are another relatively simple fabrication job. There are three component parts. The main body which I've been making from some 3mm mild steel plate and the two bushed ends, both of which have the same internal and external diameters, but one is actually slightly longer than the other. I'll kick off with the main body of which I need to make six. My primary concern here, given that they're all the same, is to minimise my effort in making them. I start off with a bit of 3mm mild steel plate. As we can see, I've applied blue to it and have marked some lines. I only actually need one of these lines because I'll be working very much by the DRO. First off is to get one of those lines aligned to the x-axis of the mill table. So here I am using the wiggler to do just that. Once aligned, I crack on with centre drilling and then drilling out a series of 8mm holes. These holes correspond to the centres of the bushes that I'll be fixing to the ends. With all the holes drilled, I do then go on to mark out the outline of all the parts and then move on to the bench and use a hacksaw to rough cut them to shape. To machine the outline for the hangers, I've made a little jig. It's quite simple, just a bit of flat bar with a couple of holes drilled and tapped to allow me to mount a couple of posts. The distance between the centre of these posts is the same as the distance between the centre of the bushes on the hanger. This then allows me to hold the brackets in position and I can use an end mill or slot drill to finish those edges. There is also another hole on the jig just in front of those two posts which is threaded at M6 and that's to allow me to fit a clamping bolt as you'll see in a second now. I decided to run with three brackets clamped in place. I could probably get more in but it would just put more load on the end mill and with those brackets securely clamped down I clean up the straight face. With the straight side done for all six, I'm going to turn them around in the jig and then I'm going to use the wiggler and rotate the vise to get lined up to the angle here. With the vise aligned it's more of the same, just using an end mill to clean up that edge. And rather than resetting the vise for the other angled edge, I just flip the parts over in the jig. And here we can see the outcome. It's worth noting that given the nature of the work I've been doing, each of these parts is now a bundle of very, very sharp edges. So a few minutes is required with the emery cloth to reduce the risk of me cutting my fingers even more. Before I dispense with the jig, there is one outstanding operation. I need to drill down through each of the brackets, the hole for the retaining pin for the brake shoes. So I've already got the jig positioned correctly under the quill, so center line on the X axis and likewise center line on the Y axis and I've made a, a slight modification to the clamp to enable the drill to get down into the centre there. To remove any doubt I went right the way through the parts and the jig. The bushes for the ends of the brackets are a simple turning exercise. They've all got the same external diameter, internal diameter at 8 and 4 millimetres respectively. Using some 8 mil bar, I get into a little process. First I centre drill, then drill the 4 mil hole, then I part off to slightly over length and then repeat another 11 times. Once I've got all 12, each needs to be popped back into the chuck and finished to length. To solder the parts together, I've made a little jig, just using a bit of 3mm bar. I've drilled and tapped two holes at M4, the right distance apart, which is 54mm. And we can see I've got the bush screwed in at one end, with a washer to offset it from the bar, and then a longer bush at the other end. 
So it's a 6.4 mil bush at the far end and a 9.6 mil bush at the near end. To ensure the main body sits correctly with respect to the two bushes, I've got some 3.8 or 3.2 mil bar here, which I'll clamp behind the bracket to hold it in the correct place. Before assembling the soldering, I do need to apply some flux, so I've already got some paste mixed up and I'm using a small brush here to put it on the ends of the main body. It won't be clear in the video, but I have actually put a slight chamfer on those curved ends to give somewhere for the solder fillet to sit. Although not shown here, I've also put some pencil lead against the washer on the far bush and also against the joint between the long bush and the jig in an attempt to keep the solder away from those parts. Before applying heat, I do add a little bit of solder covered in paste to each of the joints. To clean the parts after soldering, I did soak them in some dilute sulfuric acid, otherwise known as drain cleaner here in the UK. I left them in for 20 minutes, but I'm not sure it really made any difference, so I reverted back to the normal process of using some emery cloth to give all the parts a really good clean. It's fair to say that cleaning these took a lot of time and effort, and even now you can still see there's quite a few scratches on, so more work required. But they're good enough for now. Here's one of the hanger brackets and the hanger itself fits just like that. There is a hole for a split pin or a retaining pin of some form and then the bottom bush will be located against one of the brake beams yet to be made. And on this positive note I'll wrap this video up here and say as always thanks for watching.